Okay, welcome everybody. Um, as you can probably see from here, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, uh, partake in the Great British Bake Off. And I've put here, Mary Berry was here. Okay, no apologies to Geoffrey. So, just to ask you a first question, how many of you have made cakes in your life? Just one person. Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody's that, afraid you're <laughs> not. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is we're, we're going to talk about the rumen and, and the rumen in, in the dry cow and the rumen in the fresh cow and just sort of interrelate them to each other. So I thought the best way to do that would actually to be able to, to bake a rumen, to actually make a rumen. And if, if we know how, how a rumen is made up, we then maybe know how to manage it and what we want to achieve from it and how we go forth from, your, from, from a carved cow. Okay, so really... I need, quite desperately, a Mary Berry. So who would like to be my Mary Berry? Would you like to be Mary Berry, sir? No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> who would like to volunteer, please? I need a volunteer. Go on, then. You're looking at me. Come over. <laughs> oh, you are, Phil. <laughs> so, Mary Berry. Welcome, Mary Berry. I think we're a round of applause for Mary Berry. There we are. Well done. OK. So, um, what's your real name, Mary? Phil. <laughs> so this is Mil Mary Phil Berry, and today he's going to make us a cake. Of, uh, he's going to make a rumen. You looking forward to that? Oh, excited I am. <laughs> you don't look excited. You need to be jumping. <laughs> up and down. So because this, this is on, this, this is you know we're here. We're we're uh, we've got to try to create the best image. So we need to make you look like a cook. <laughs> so what does he need? White hat. He needs a, a hat. He needs a hat. <laughs> there we are. Got one of these hats. There we are. A hat for you. Okay. Anything else? An apron. Ah, <laughs> I've got just a thing. There we are. One apron. There we are. Turning around. Good job. You did have me. It wouldn't have fitted me. Are you all his friends? Because if you're not, I can do this really tight. <laughs> and there's probably one more thing he needs to make his cake with. What do you need? Hmm? A bowl. A bowl. We've got a bowl. This is our rumen. Okay. One rumen. Okay, this is a rumen. You have to use your imagination. Okay, what else do you need? A spoon. A spoon, yeah, I've got a spoon in here as well. How about that? There we go. So, there we go. <laughs> so, this is where you have to get involved and answer the questions. You, you're, you're off the latch, mate, now. Okay, thanks. So, the main ingredient of a good functioning rumen? Forage. Forage, yeah, before forage. Bugs. But before bugs, actually, the most important thing in anything in life, really. Water. water. Mary, do you want to add the water? How much would you like? All of it, I think. There we are. Mary's out of the water. Fantastic. How much water is in a rumen, in a, in a good functioning rumen? Don't look at the box. <laughs> How much would you say in a good functioning rumen? How, bi how big is a rumen? How, how many litres is a rumen? 200. Very close. A bit a larger or smaller? About 250 litres is the capacity of a rumen. So therefore, how much water do you think is in a rumen? Half? Three quarters? Quarter? What do you think? Half. Yeah, so 125, yeah. About 160 litres of water is in a rumen. Which is quite phenomenal, isn't it? Okay. What does the water do? Why is it in there? Because surely it's important. What does it do to the? What's it doing? It's there for fun. What does it do? Starts the digestion process. What's this mean? Are you are you one of those the tipsters? On the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten to one on. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what what does that mean? Fundamentally, water breaks down food. Okay. Because any ration in that rumen is broken down by water. The bugs don't break down the food, it's the water that breaks down the food. So without water you get no breakdown of food and it's the bugs that speed up the process. Okay, yeah, so you could put a handful of that in there for a week it wouldn't break down. Sorry? You could put a handful of that in there for a week and it wouldn't break down. It would start to break down but the bugs speed up the process. That's what they're there for. They actually speed the process up. And the process is called hydro, water, Lysis, so water breaks down the food. Okay, and that, it's actually the water that breaks down the food. The, the bugs just speed it up. So, Mary, what's your next uh, important um, constituent of your room? The bugs, food. We can put the bugs in, but what about the food? What, what food product are we going to put Forage. in? Forage. What should we put in? What have we got? 
This is a dry cow ration. What, what's in your dry cow ration? Straw silage. Okay. There we are. Do you want to put some of that? Put some straw in. I don't know how much you want. You should know. You're the cook. <laughs> I never said I was a cook. <laughs> you are. You're the cook today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just put it. Put it over the top. Okay. Put it this. Yeah. Yeah. Can you uh, answer that phone? Hello, Mary. Mary. <laughs> we could have answered that. One of us. So, um, a bit of bit of grass silage on top, maybe. Just a tiny bit. And many of you people feed your dry cows grass silage as well as straw. If you feed it straw, yeah. Okay. What else might you put in that ration? What have we got here? Oh, there we are. A little bit of that. Just a tiny bit of that. A handful of that. Now we've got some straights here. There we are. A little bit more on that side. That's great. Okay. So now Mary is going to not not stir, but pretend to stir. So hang on, whoa, whoa. pretend. You've got to listen, Sorry. Mary. It's very important you listen. Okay. Yeah. Do you like the chin action here? Yeah. There we are. Okay. Now there's no there's no qualms. I mean, this looks somewhat ridiculous, but this is actually what a rumen looks like in real life. It's not what we might think. There's actually what we call a rumen mat on top of the fluid. Okay. And below is a fluid liquor, and then it's the fluid liquor, answer it, fluid liquor that then goes into the next part of the stomach, the abomasum. So in our dry cows, it's absolutely important that we have a full rumen. And Tim will speak about rumen fill in a minute. And if one of these cows was nice enough to come over to us and present her left hand side, we then look at the, the left hand side, we look at that triangle. Do you know about the triangle on the left hand side of the cow, paralumbar fossa? And we need to ensure our dry cows are quite full. Because if they're not full, when they come in to the, the milking group, they don't have the capacity or the drive to maintain that room in full. So that's, that's what we're trying to achieve, OK? And what happens if we don't have good room and fill in our dry cows? Well, what are the problems that might ensue afterwards? DAs. Yeah? Yeah, why do we get a DA if it's not that room full? What? Don't stop the other stomach from coming out right. Yeah, so we need, basically, we, we know that if we maintain good rumen fill in our dry cows, that dry cow's ah. rumen is almost programmed to want to fill her rumen to that capacity throughout her lactation, okay? And yeah, one of the theories about DAs is, yeah, when it's, when it's not full, there's a space for the rumen to allow the abomasum to become displaced. Another theory is that... In a cow with poor rumen fill, basically what happens is the rumen mat gets lower and lower and lower. And basically the products that actually are taking place in the, in the digestion, the digestion works, is actually taking place in the rumen mat. Those bugs there and, and the liquor produced then basically go, goes to a lower level and leaks in to the abomasum. So we're going from an acid to an alkali and the acid rumen contents go into the abomasum and that it, it renders the abomasum non-functional. And then when the, when the abomasum becomes non-functional, it stops working. When it stops working, it, it blows up. And that's another theory for DAs. And the, the, the main reason why a cow gets DA is, it, is poor dry matter intake. Now that's disease after calving or not enough access to ration, or uh, through being stressed or being a heifer. Um, and I think we just dwell on it very quickly. Uh, pain at calving. I think as, as time goes on, more and more, more of us now may be using painkillers after a, a different, difficult calving, because poor animals animal's in pain, she's not going to eat, is she? If you give her some, some, some pain relief, she should hopefully eat and get good room and fill. So if you were Mary Berry now mixing this, and you're not going to mix it, how often does a rumen mix? Have you ever measured how often a rumen mixes? Maybe 60 seconds. Maybe. Yeah, what do you think? Yes. So the contraction of the rumen is, is we, we, we'd say it would contract three times every two minutes. Okay, so not very fast, I think. I don't think it's very fast. And it makes, actually, the point that it's not so much the mixing and the mashing of the rumen that breaks down the, the food, it's allowing the contact time of the bugs on the food to make sure the food's broken down. Okay? 
That's one of the things. You, you want to go, you're not going yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So the bugs. The bugs are important. We, we need to maintain or be sure that the bugs that we start developing in, in, the, in the transition period, which is usually about three weeks before calving, are like the bugs that are going to be in the lactating cow. So the first question is, how long does it take the, the rumen bugs to adapt from a dry cow ration to a milking cow ration? How many days or weeks? Three weeks? Three weeks? Yeah. So actually, it's, it's more than that. Okay? Uh, it is actually a little bit more, but the reason we use a transition time of about three weeks is because we're not expecting this cow at calving to be raring to go because the milk yield will go up. And that five weeks really coincides with when her milk yield is, is becoming more, more optimum. Do you see where I'm coming from? And also, it's this. If we're putting straights in a, in a dry cow ration for three, five weeks before, you might get weight gain. It's going to be expensive. So three weeks is about the happy medium. Okay. So what in the ration makes the correct bugs from the dry cow to the lactating cow? What do we have to put in this ration? to ensure that the lactating cow ration is, is more akin to, to, to what we want. What part of the, the, blend. the blend? What part of the blend? Protein. It's not the protein. It's the starch content of the blend, basically. What that does, it, it stimulates the right rumen bugs, but it also does something else to the rumen. Do you know what else it does to the rumen? When's the last time you saw some rumen? Okay. All close your eyes. I wonder if they trust me. All close your eyes. C keep them closed. Keep them closed. Now, listen. Okay, listen. Okay. There we are. <laughs> As if by magic. Okay. So if you all come close. You have, all have to stop breathing now, because this is a bit smelly. So you've all seen tripe, haven't you? Okay. So you get these, these papillae here. So they're really important because they're responsible for actually absorbing the acids from the rumen. And the bigger they are, the more absorption you get. And the bigger they are, the more stable the rumen is. Because, you know, if you... Do you feed cake here in the parlour? So when, whenever you feed cake in the parlour, the, the rumen pH really drops, and you need a, a stability scheme. And the greater these fingers, the greater the surface area of these fingers, the more absorptive capacity you get. And it's the starch content of your, of your dry cow ration that, that make them grow. Okay? And we know that if you do that right, you increase the absorptive capacity of your rumen by, by five times, which is quite tremendous, isn't it? Okay? So um, that's worth bearing in mind, and that's only done by ensuring that the ration here is like the ration that the milking cows are going to have. And you the thing with rumen, you know, it's actually not that thick, is it? The actual muscle is not that thick. You'd all assume, wouldn't you, that it would be a really thick structure and it would be mushing the food all the time. But as I said to you, it, it's really slow. The rumen is literally three times every two minutes. And it's basically, if it were any quicker, the bugs wouldn't have much contact time with, with actually to do the work they want to do. Okay, so that, that's room and function. So I hope now you can go in, you can actually make your recipe, you know, in your mixer wagons or what, however you feed your room to ensure that your dry cows are full. Okay, and the bugs are t the the bugs are actually changing such that they can be adapted to the the milking cow ration, and ensure at calving that a cow has really good access to as much food and more importantly water so I think it's the water that really gets them to drive their dry matter intake in do any of you stomach tube your cows at, car at calving or no how much water do you think a freshly calved cow should eat uh, how, how much sorry how much water do you think she should drink at calving I'm just trying to find something to wash my hands there we are how many buckets? If you put, how many buckets would they drink at calving? Do you think? Yeah. How many buckets is that? Yeah, I reckon about three buckets. Yeah, and I, I know it's so important that they they get that food and they get that water because again, 
if, if that rumen is full at calving, that cow basically says, right, from now on, I need to maintain my rumen fill this big. Okay, they're almost programmed at, at day one to maintain that rumen fill. So, you know, make sure there's adequate water. And I always say, bring the water to the cow. Don't assume a cow's going to go to the water trough when she's busy with her calf. You know, just get a big, I'm sure some of you do now, a big black barrel, fill it up with water right in front of the cow. It's going to make such a difference. And some people sell you stuff, don't they? They sell you potions that you give to your cows. I don't think it's necessarily the potion. I think it's the fact that it's, it's the quantity of water that gets them going. So how do we know that after Mary's cooked this cake, what temperature was the cake at? Body temperature. Mm. Correct. 37, yeah. Or 38.6. Um, so your, your body temperature is 37. I'm not going to take your temperature. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, so how do we know it's gone right? How do we know we've done it right? Because I'm, I'm dwelling on the positives. I'm not doing the negatives. So how do we know we've done it right? What doesn't happen to our fresh calved cow, hopefully? She didn't get a DA. Do it hold her own bed? She won't retain her, her fetal membrane. She doesn't get retained cleansing. Okay, anything else? Later on as well? Milk fever. Milk fever, yeah. Mastitis. Yeah. Sorry? Mastitis. Mastitis, absolutely. Should be done in everything. Sorry? Work, everything will be working with movement inside. Yeah, it's a good dry matter intake, chewing the cud. Um, what other condition do we get sometimes that we can measure? Ketosis. Ketosis, yeah. And I mean, we, we'll just talk a little bit about ketosis now and the fact that, um, that we reckon about 30% of high yielding cows have what we call subclinical ketosis. And what, what's ketosis? What is it? Energy. Yeah, it's an energy problem, isn't it? It's where the cow's energy requirements are not met by her ration or she doesn't have the capacity to be able to eat enough to maintain her energy so what she does she she says i know i've got some i've got fat reserves in my in my body i'll use those and fat reserve um use is very very inefficient and she gets ketosis she feels very toxic and it's really in ketosis is there's 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 a syndrome called fatty liver syndrome You've heard of, all of, heard of fatty liver? And that calls it basically a liver that's not functioning basically makes the animal very, very open to, to disease. And it's really interesting, you know, the, the only proper cake maker amongst us, obviously, today. You, mastitis sometimes is a manifestation of, of fatty liver or ketosis. Retained fetal membranes is a manifestation of, 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 of the same condition. So how do we know it's right? And Mr. Cox says he doesn't get any ketosis, but I, I would say we reckon about 30% of animals um, get ketosis. So have any of you seen these? They're basically test strips, okay? And it's like the old urine test strips that you used to use. You dip that in, in milk, and after a minute you'll get a colour change. The darker the colour change, the more ketones there is in, in that cow's milk. So we only test fresh calved cows, okay? And... You expect probably three out of ten cows to have ketones in their milk because they're losing condition. If you say to me, none of your cows lose condition after calving, well, you're brilliant. Tell us how you do it. Because they do, and we're trying to minimise the, the amount of condition. So let's monitor. Mr Cox's cows were absolutely fine. We did these this morning. These are three fresh calvers, one of which was a... So these are your cows we did this morning. So all good. Well done. There are alternative ways to measure ketones. And this is a blood analyzer, but with the, with the advent of this, you know, a couple of quid a strip or something, it's absolutely fine to, to monitor. So I would say monitor, monitor, monitor. So what, in your opinion, what's more dangerous, a, a fat cow at calving or a thin cow at calving? Sorry? Fat cow? Yeah, why is a fat cow? What, what, what is it about the fat cow that makes her doomed to uh, more production problems? Because you said a bit of fatty liver, doesn't it? Yeah. Why does she get fatty liver? Mm. Does, a, does a fat cow eat more or less than a, a, a cow in proper condition? Less. Less. Why does she eat less? She relies on her own body mm. But surely she must, she must be a bit of a porker because she's got fat, so she must have better dry matter intake because she's got fat. Have you ever thought why fat cows eat less? I don't know. 
Sorry? They're not as active. Well, they probably are as active, but I mean, what, what stops a fat cow from eating as much as a, as a cow in correct condition? She's got more fat, so she hasn't got so Not really, not really. So if I, if I say to you, what's the difference between a fat cow and a non fat cow? Sorry? The weight. The weight, or what's the difference between the fat the cow fat. and a non fat cow? Sorry? Fat. The fat, yes. So it's actually the fat that stops the animal from having that maximal or maximum um, dry matter intake. And there's a hormone that's produced from the fat that almost says to the cow, my dear, because you're carrying enough, you don't need to eat. Okay? And that's actually the worst thing that cow can happen to her. Because if she doesn't have the capacity or the desire to eat, which is what she needs for milk production, she then uses her fat as a means of energy, and that has a consequence of, of ketosis. Okay, and that drug, that that, that drug, that, that hormone is called leptin. Have you ever heard of leptin? Yeah, you've heard of leptin. Have you taken it? Uh, I know. No, <laughs> no. Leptin actually is is something allegedly you can go down the chemist and get. It's not blue, but it's a little pill that basically is a slimmer's pill, and that's how it works in in humans. Okay, humans are somewhat different to to cows and the fact they, they look at advertising of chocolate products and other things but uh, that's 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 the that's the um, the, the basis of, of the slimming pill so that's what happens so if we've got a fat dry cow if we've got a f the black and white one mr cox tells me is 14,000 litre cow um, every year she crashes okay we, we've measured milk yields in cows that have k ketosis both subclinical and uh, clinical ketosis and we're talking in excess of 300 litres lost in the lactation okay so that equates to quite a bit of money doesn't it so the next introduction to you now is this thing here who's seen one of these Ta -da. No? have any of you seen these no who would like to be the volunteer and have one <laughs> turn round <laughs> So this is what we call a, a Kekstone bolus, okay? Anybody know how it works? Where does it go first of all? It goes in the rumen. Which way does it go? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, well done. <laughs> um, it then sits in the rumen. It contains something called, you, some of you uh, more wise people, older, may, may have heard of, of something called menensin. Have you heard of menensin? Menensin? No? Menensin was formerly a growth promoter. In what it does, it works by, basically, your knowledge of what the rumen's doing with the bugs. So basically what it does, it promotes the bacteria in the rumen that go on to produce glucose for the cow. Okay? So it basically gives the cow more of the bugs that then produce an acid that gets absorbed through the rumen wall that goes to the liver that's made, that makes glucose. So it helps potentially to give these cows more energy. Okay? We all look a bit sceptical. Um, so, you know, just watch this space. I mean, we, we did the trial. We, we, we didn't know. We were given these. We didn't know whether they had the, the real medicine in them or antimicrobial because it affects certain bugs over another or whether it was a placebo. We did the trial, and on in you know in, in several thousand cows in the UK when we did it in, in Germany and in, in, in some of the Scandinavian countries, they saw saw an increase in 150 liters of milk. But we gave it to all the cows in the herd, not the ones that wanted it. We only give this to this black and white cow over there. We would say to um, give her more energy and make her less likely to get ketosis. And we were in Somerset doing this meeting, and I mean, the, res the response in Somerset to these is just tremendous. So you were first to know. So okay. when you give them that one, that carbon? Like How long does it take for the bugs to adapt? Three weeks, yeah. So, so when do you give it to them? Three weeks. When they come in the dry coat. Three weeks, hmm. yeah. Okay. If you miss that time, is it a waste of time? No, not at all, no. But that, that's when you're going to get a maximum effect. So we've done some trials since, and... 
Sod the Milk Guild. You might not say Sod the Milk Guild. Thank you. Um, Sod the Milk Guild. But what we've done, we have found a tremendous improvement in health in these animals. No DAs, hardly any DAs, um, no cases of acetonemia. Okay? I'm not going to say any more about it because it's up to you to speak to your colleagues and people. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad I've shown it to you because... What's the cost? £27. Okay, but just think of the milk you would get back. We've got people in our... I, I work in big practice in Somerset that um, they want it for every cow. We sort of say, no, you can't, that's not right. You use it on the cows that you, you fill, <coughs> you know. You will always get cows, won't you, that have taken a long time to get in calf, that are fat. We would use it in cows with, with yonis because they can't utilise their, their food. We'd use it in cows that have twins, if they've been scanned with twins, you probably know they've got twins from their condition anyway, you know, later on. Um, in lame ones that, you know, can't utilise their food, and, and in fat heifers as well. And, uh, you know, the results are, are really, really good. So just be aware of it. I'm not here to sell this. I want you to get your management perfect and not have to use this. But you will get cows that get fat, won't you? You know, you'll all, you'll all have fat dry cows. And that's that's a product for them. Okay. Is there any chance that's going to be Oatmeal then if it's got uh, Sorry? if you've got Menenski in it, which was I guess was Oatmeal before, is it not? It was banned before. So how come that's allowed now then? Uh, legislation says that it's an antimicrobial. Right, okay, so okay. it's just a different yeah. basically. Yeah. And it, it you know, it's uh, widely available in New Zealand. So it's just come over to the UK. All right? So just we've got a few more minutes left. I think before we do, we've got to give a round of applause to Mary Berry, <laughs> and what do you think, boys and girls? Um, We'd like a picture of Mary Berry. Um, <laughs> I think what is that one? <laughs> let's let's just um, yeah, Mary Berry, put your hat on immediately. I need it back. There we are. So Mary Berry, is, we're going to Mary Berry today is number one. So uh, thanks to Mary Berry. Right. Thank you, Mary <laughs> Berry. <laughs> so um, just to finish off. I need that back. Um, just a few monitoring things we can use. I mean, we'll, um, you can monitor. We've got these simple sheets here that we give our farmers monitoring cow health after, after calving. You know, some of the farm assurance want you to use that now. Um, there are monitoring sheets for the, the use of the keto test. Okay. And um, what we're going to just finish on is body condition scoring. So who, who have you body condition scored their cows? Anyone? No? It's all clearly not important then. But I, I'm saying it is important. It's important because we know that the greatest factor in the ongoing fertility of your animals is how much condition score they lose between when they carve to when you serve them. And it's phenomenal. If they lose one condition score, okay, we equate that to a reduction in conception rate by about a half. So it's absolutely fundamental. So, basically, we need to, to carve our cows in the correct condition school. Okay? If we carve them in the correct condition school, their body says to them, right, there's none of this leptin going around today because I've got exactly the right amount of fat in my body. So I need, the only way I can get my energy is through my ration. Therefore, I've got to eat a lot. And you, you're all dairy farmers. If a cow eats a lot, guess what? Gives you more milk. It's more healthy. Okay? So there's some condition school charts here. Take one away with you. We can't get the cows near enough today. But it looks at, obviously, the, 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 the back of the, the head, the tail head, and looks at the, um, the spinous processes. And how, how, do take one in a minute when we, when we come to an end, OK? Oh, Mary Berry, there's a little thing here that you might have to try as well, just to... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you, do you want to count this chap's fillings? Uh. <laughs> so before we, before we go, come this way. All come this way. We'll show you these these um, bits and pieces here. Come come my come my yellow man. Um, my my assistant, just get rid of that and get me a bucket of water for the next. Yeah, please. Okay. Don't show anybody. Just tip it on here. Okay. So just a few things to finish off. The dry cow is really important for the for ongoing fertility. So if we get the, the, the ration right, we know that the next egg for the next calf is produced during the dry period. 
So it's important in the dry period to maintain the condition of the animal. And what's really bad for dry cows is loss of condition. Because if a cow, dry cow is losing condition, she's not having enough energy. And that energy will affect the quality of the egg. Okay? So bear that in mind. Another thing that I think we, we sometimes forget about is, is mineral nutrition in the dry period. Do all of you feed minerals throughout the dry period or just at the end? The last three weeks. So that you don't, do you? No, no. And I think, that, I think it's really important to feed minerals throughout the dry period. Not in buckets, because black and white dogs like, you know, black and white rabbits, what do you call them? Black and white foxes around here? So basically, um, you know, get the animal needs a mineral supply throughout its dry period. In almost three weeks, you've, you've surpassed the time when that follicle is actually at, at, at its most important stage, okay? So bear that in mind. Also, guess what? This is a section of a foot. You've got bone and you've got hoof. What's in between the, the actual um, horn and the bone? Do you know what this area is called? Where the blood vessels are? What's it made out of? What does it look like it's made out of? Is it muscle? Is it blood? Could it be fat? It's fat. So this is what they call the fat pad. And just to, you know, to, to just bring this home with you today, if a cow loses a lot of condition post-calving, she loses also the fat from her foot. So if it, that it makes the case that managing condition score in the dry cow, it's not just for fertility in production and health, it actually affects lameness. Because it's a fat pad that literally gives her the cushion as well. So it is absolutely fundamental what goes on. Okay, thank you very much. If you've touched anything here today, make sure you wash your hands before lunch.